when you've chosen to commit your life to Jesus Christ and you've, you've chosen to learn more how to walk this walk and become a true disciple of Christ, you've chosen that good part and the good part is that it will not be taken away from you. special and I know you've heard it a lot today and I guess we should you should hear it all year long really but today is a day that's been set aside by our nation and I believe that God inspired it you know for mothers a time of honor mothers work very hard and I, I see mothers as like God in the sense of their love for their children and, and their faithfulness. I've often thought about that. One um, minister at the church we came out from, they had a debate, and they were debating a male and a female, and the female was to defend uh, God being like a woman. and. She pointed out that he was called the breasted one, and they had a nice little debate. But I often see God as, uh, I often see male and female together as a good representation of God. You look at the male qualities, and then you look at the female qualities. And I believe we can learn a lot about God. So mothers, happy Mother's Day to all of you. Precious mothers, I think we ought to, men and single women, let's just give God thanks for the mothers again. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day to all of you. Our prayers is that this day will just be a good reminder as to how special you really are. We thank you. are very special. I'm going to be sort of brief, I guess. I want to just uh, turn your attention to the book of uh, St. Luke, chapter 10. When you found this, say amen. All right, we're going to begin all the way down near the last, verse 38. Now it came to pass, as they went, that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. Together. 
But one, one thing, thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for the word of God. We ask that it be a blessing to the mothers, and not only the mothers, but each one this year today, everyone this year. We thank you. We bless you. Lord, let, let, just let a, a peace come over all of the mothers in a very special way. They've toiled, they've just worked very hard, Lord God, and they do things that only you know, oh God, they are to be commended for. But we ask that your peace and your blessings rest upon them today in a very significant way. We thank you for them, Lord, and we honor them because you chose to honor them first. Thank you, Father. Bless now the remainder of this service. And let your precious Holy Spirit take full control. We really acknowledge and need your precious Holy Spirit, Lord. Everything that is done that's lasting has to be done by your Spirit. And so we acknowledge your presence. And we thank you for your Spirit. Bless them significantly. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. I want to say briefly to the mothers, you have chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from you. Mothers, you have chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from you. As I was Reading this passage of scripture here, uh, some thoughts came to my mind, um, of course, concerning the mothers. And a little bit of the background, Bethany was a little town on the slope of the Mount of Olives, probably about 11 miles, some estimate, 11 miles from uh, Jerusalem. And it was said that there were two uh, meanings for that word Bethany. One meant the house of unripe figs, and the other was the house of misery because of the isolated situations and because of the invalids that dwelt in that area. But strangely enough, Jesus spent a lot of time in that area, Bethany. It's mentioned several times in the New Testament. And somehow or another, uh, there were certain people that he gravitated toward. This was Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. And it was believed that he made frequent stops there to, when he was going that way to stop in on Martha and Mary. They, they were friends of Jesus. They loved uh, him and they demonstrated their love to him in a number of ways and but he uh, sort of like Elijah and the widow woman the widow woman in the days of Elijah uh, they she every time he was coming there by her path by her way he would stop in at times and she would either just fix a meal or fix a, she even had a room built so that when he came he could just really retire there for as long as he needed to and um, he remembered the story of Elijah. And so finally, she just was so kind to him. And one day he said, uh, what is it that uh, I can do for you? You've been really just kind uh, over the years. And so he asked the Lord. And the Lord uh, obviously must have put upon him, or she mentioned it one, I can't remember, that uh, she didn't have a son. And so he prayed to the Lord and told her that 
this time next year you're going to have a son and so she obviously this was so much a desire of her heart that when he told her that she said nay man of God don't, don't lie to me in other words don't build my hopes up like that you know all of my life I've been longing for a son and now you're telling me that I can I will have a son but sure enough uh, at the word of the Lord she had a son but it was out of her constant acts of kindness toward Elijah that uh, out of his heart, his bowels, he wanted to uh, pray and find out what he could do to be a blessing to her. And, uh, and so that was a heart desire that she had and God granted that to her. And so, uh, but Martha and Mary and Lazarus, they uh, were somewhat like that. They loved Jesus in spite of their lives and their situation. And uh, so you know the story. You've heard it, I'm sure, and read it as well many times. Uh, there's a certain village there. Martha, uh, perhaps this was, uh, she was the older, and perhaps she, it was her house, maybe because it sort of implies that. Um, but it says that uh, it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. Martha had the, uh, a wonderful idea that uh, she wanted to really prepare a wonderful meal for her honored guest, Jesus, which was a good thing. And, uh, but in her preparation and working so hard, Jesus, when he arrived, and Mary chose to sit at his feet and listen to him, which is a type of discipleship that term set at his feet. And, um, but Martha was concerned, and it was traditional for women to just, you know, do the service uh, in, 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 in situations like that. It was not um, in the ordinary for them to do like Mary. So Martha you know, Jesus being a rabbi and understanding customs and the, uh, the things of that society, uh, you know, has set up. She goes to Jesus and said, uh, why don't you make her, you know, do basically, you know, she should be serving. And, uh, and so it, it seems that she had a lot of anxieties according to the scripture, right? Troubled, and uh, he says um, it like this. Uh, and I like the way he put it. He had such compassion for her because she had a lot of anxiety. She was stressed. She was frustrated because she needed some help. And here Mary was sitting down there listening. And it, in her mind, she, 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 she's not being thoughtful. She's not being considerate. Seeing that the martyrs, you know, they apparently agreed to fix this wonderful meal for Jesus being honored. Yes, and, and then she looked like she ended up doing it mostly by herself while Mary chose to do something different. So can you imagine and you can have sympathy with her because it was a good thing. She really wanted to do something good and please Jesus. And so uh, that, that Jesus is not uh, condemning what she did because it was a good thing. What the scripture is implying is uh, Mary's priority was the better choice, right? So it was not uh, condemning her choice that she made as much as commending Mary for uh, choosing the better thing. And uh, so then Jesus' response was quite different from uh, what Martha was expecting, he gently or came to her and said, Martha, Martha, 
You know that tone when, when somebody is anxious and they, they, they're really a little bit stressed and so the one that maybe they respect comes and says something like, Martha, Martha, calm down, you know. It's like, calm down, you know. And, um, and then he shared with her, you're cumbered or you're troubled about many things. And, but um, uh, one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that good part. So I say to the mothers, my thought was, mothers, you know, you came and you chose Christ. You chose to serve the Lord. You could have not accepted the call. You could have not uh, chosen to serve the Lord and be with him and given your life over to Jesus Christ. But you chose the good part. In the midst of all that's going on in life, yes, we get busy. And uh, there, the, uh, we, you know, different people have different temperaments, right? Some people feel like they have to be busy doing something all the time. They, they can't stand a moment of just rest. They, they, they're intimidated by or they're frustrated with that. But, and then some people have temperaments where they can uh, do things differently in a calm way and not do a whole lot in certain times. Everything having its proper place in their lives. But temperaments are different. I've talked to someone not too long ago that said to me, I can't stand to just do nothing or be nothing. I can sit around the house and, you know, but I, I just got to be doing something. I've got to be doing something. Well, I don't have that particular problem. In my early years, I worked real hard. You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, so when God, I told the Lord uh, years ago, and I remember working in New York, staying with my brother, and um, then they, we had swing shifts and different shifts. 3 to 11, 11 to 7, 7 to 3. And um, so I said, Lord, I don't want to be doing something like this all my life. I just, this don't, I don't like this, you know. And so I asked God to give me a job. I don't think I was willing to pay the, the year's price for being a, becoming a doctor. But I liked their hours, and I liked the fact that they could, <laughs> you know, they could choose their hours more or less. And, so I asked the Lord to help me, give me something that I could enjoy and do well and this kind of thing and, and not have to get up at 5 o'clock to, to be to a 7 o'clock job or have to work overnight. You know, just, uh, just it didn't seem right. So uh, anyway, but, but I didn't know he was going to call me into the ministry. So I, I, um, I don't quite have those doctor hours. Well. <laughs> but... But I'm thankful for the job that he gave me. I am, I'm grateful to it, and uh, I enjoy what I'm doing. And I think everyone have that right to enjoy what you're doing, you know. But um, so anyway, um, he spoke to Martha and said, uh, you, you, you're, you're cumbered about so many things. And um, it's okay, you know. His response was not what she expected. He said... There's, out of all your busyness, there's something needful. And your sister chose that part. Now, the good thing about it is he said, now, it, it would have been, I guess, uh, sufficient for him to say she's chosen the better part, being that it was coming from Jesus, right? But he went further and said, she's chosen a good part which shall not be taken away from her. And so I'm saying to you mothers, today it may not seem like it. And you may be getting a little uh, criticism from those that may not understand the choices that you've made. Loved ones that may be, uh, they may be saved and they have not, uh, and they don't see things differently. But I want you to know that you've chosen a good part. When you've chosen to commit your life to Jesus Christ. And you've, you've chosen to learn more how to walk this walk and become a true disciple of Christ. You've chosen that good part. And the good part is that it will not be taken away from you. Hallelujah. It will not be taken away from you. 
Praise the Lord. So we look at uh, uh, Mary and Martha's life. Um, you can, you know, as I said, you can kind of, if you want to look at, uh, let's look at John, St. John chapter 11. And if you have your Bibles, I'm going to refer you there right fast. You're going to see Mary and Martha again. <clears throat> and I'll read some of this in verse, starting at verse 1, chapter 11, John. Now a certain man was sick named Naz Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not to death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he stayed or abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that, said he to his disciples, Let us go into Judea again. His disciples said to him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbles not, because he sees the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbles because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. Then said Jesus to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I'm glad for your sake that I was not there to the intent you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. And, uh, but we see um, Mary and Martha in this. And as you go on and you begin to read more, you, you'll see uh, Martha and Mary in action. Martha comes and runs to Jesus when he approaches Bethany. And he hadn't gotten there, but he was right on the outskirts. And so she heard, and she ran there. Martha and Mary were still there. Mary didn't move. And then later, uh, at, he talked to her. She approached Jesus and said, uh, Lord, if you, if you just been here my, 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 my brother wouldn't have died you know I, but even now if you you know I believe that you could do something if you you will so he said um, your brother's gonna rise again so she I said I, I know I know Lord in the resurrection he's gonna rise again but uh, Jesus says I'm the resurrection and the life and as the conversation went on then she began to go back to her sister Mary and she began to tell her about that Jesus was there. So then Mary got up. And there were those Jews following her. So if you look now, uh, verse 28. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly, saying, The master is come and call it for thee. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to him. Now Jesus was not yet coming to the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then, which were with her in the house, and comforted her, when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goes to the grave, and, uh, grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if I had been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. But somehow or another Mary had that, that connection with, with, with the Lord. And uh, he was moved by her her pain and sorrow in the heart and and the Jews came with her when they saw Mary uh, um, come out of the house that they thought she he was going to the grave and 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 they had uh, professional mourners during those time 
And the professional mourners, basically, they were trained to just mourn. And, uh, you, you, you know, if a person coming from another country came and seen something like that, they would thought, boy, that person was very, very dear to these different people's heart. And, but they were trained professional mourners, and they would just weep and cry out loud, just like they was their mother or father. And coming in and hearing that, you said, Lord, wow. But they were trained mourners. And uh, so when they went to, when they saw Mary leave, they had gone to weep with her. And uh, remember a situation where Jesus, uh, there was a, a, some son that died, I believe it was a, a daughter. No, Jairus' daughter, that's who it was. Um, she died and then Jesus came and the professional mourners were there. They were just mourning, just carrying on. And Jesus said, so why are you, make this, why are you making this at all? He said, that, 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 that. The maid's not dead, but she's asleep. Now, out of their heavy morning, they just broke out and started laughing. It's like, he's crazy. You know, he's talking about she's not, uh, she's not dead. So they just broke out laughing. But I'm saying that to say that they were professional mourners. It was not something that was deep in their heart and a loved one. It was just they were paid. I don't know if they were paid, but they were professional mourners. So, but uh, be that as it may, Jesus uh, was touched by Mary, following Mary's life a little bit. He was touched by Mary. Remember he said he, Mary has chosen that good part. Both of them did good, but Mary did better because she was willing to sit at the feet of Jesus and be taught. You look at somebody that says, you are willing to sit at his feet and be taught. Therefore, you've chosen the good part. Hallelujah. And that good part is not going to be taken away from you. It's going to follow you in life. And you, you, you must be, uh, you will probably be amazed at where you end up in life, mothers, because you've chosen that good part. And as we go on here, we began to see here, uh, the Bible says in John 11 that it was that same Mary uh, that, um, which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. So we know the story of the, uh, that Mary that anointed him uh, with her hair and that um, ointment. And, and, and uh, uh, it, was, it, was, it was a situation where God had healed her. And because he had healed her with some, of some deep hurts, she loved more. As all your 